Great, I'm super excited. How many are like inspired? I think the day is done. I'm ready to go. <laughs> This is a special, special uh, day for me, actually, because it feels a little bit of a homecoming. Seeing the video of how LA is really transforming to create opportunities for folks that look like me to get into tech is amazing. I'm a product of the A18, of the 213. Uh, I'm a proud LAUSD student. Just a few miles down from here, I actually started my tech career as an electrical engineer. Uh, from USC, I went into, uh, into aerospace engineering in El Segundo, and I was there for about five, six years. When I was there, I was building things that were like amazing from an engineer perspective, like this is transformative. But then as I got older, I was really learning more about the politics, the outcomes, the things that I was building. And I really thought, is this what I want to be using my intelligence, my energy, my youth to be doing? And so that was the spark of the moment. How can we actually use tech for good? And now being able to now be at the Caper Center where all of our focus is really how can tech be done right? And it starts with representation. I think that one of the biggest issues and ethical issues that we currently have in the tech industry is the fact that people of color, specifically black and brown, are in the millions, but yet we're in the hundreds and barely thousands in different roles across the tech industry. When you take a look that your six out of nine billionaires have made their money, new money, from this tech economy, and we are being left out, to me that's, that's the cancer that we really need to be taking out as well. And I hope that we have this discussion, we really get into the, into the weeds of this, and together we dismantle all of these systems and really start creating new ones. What makes today even much more special is the fact that I get to be in conversation with this amazing change leader, investor, entrepreneur, father, but also a warm friend. We met actually out in New York uh, in grad school, and we're here to have a discussion of how it's so funny how the world has brought us together. Living all these years in LA, we ended up meeting in, out in the East Coast, and now we're reunited to really look at doing this type of work from an ecosystem level perspective at different areas. And so with that said, I'll give a few little bit more stats just to get us going. And then Austin will share a little bit more about what are some of the actual workings and solutions. And we got a little snippet, which is super inspiring. Um, but I, I just really want to ground us on the gravity and the urgency of the work that this is. This isn't diversity and inclusion isn't like a nice to have. This is a requirement. This is a need to have and a must have. The darker your skin gets, the less access you have to computer science. If I, I didn't even have opportunities to do that. I had to learn that once already, when I was already in college. When you start going down into who is at the techs, who's building, who's designing, it doesn't look like us. Who's investing in these companies? And then lastly, in the philanthropy side, I'm one of the very few Latinas that are in this space, and we need to change that, and we really need to start doing it. And I think that all of these problems, the bright side of all of it is that we're getting started, and there are solutions, but they're being done at the zip code by zip code. So Austin, all that to say, Austin, how, what is the 310, the 213? <laughs> doing and tell us what what is pledge LA really oh, yeah. focusing on 4242 in the house uh, <laughs> um, it's the new school um, so so uh, I mean it, it, thank you for opening and, and covering with the the data and the facts so often these narratives uh, I, I mean quite frankly I think they need a balance of, of, of good anecdotes and the data to support them uh, for it to really resonate with people. A lot of times we show reports about how diversity and inclusion and all these things improve performance and I think that people are like, sounds good in theory, but like something just does not connect. Um, as far as what we're doing, um, as, as both Allison and Lily have mentioned, um, I, I'm a venture capitalist. I've worked for the last four years with a fund called 10110 Ventures. We're based here in LA. Um, and and uh, also I'm the chair of Pledge LA. Uh, so I get to work with the, the mayor's office and the Annenberg Foundation on making a difference within LA and, and making it very inclusive for the tech community. Um, so to your question, like on a, on a zip code by zip code basis, I like how you framed it that way. Um, I, I think that people don't necessarily think about, in the tech community, necessarily think about engaging with their city in terms of building an ecosystem. Like there, there's usually this disconnect between like we're the tech community, we're moving faster than everybody else, we have all the bright ideas, we're creating all the wealth and all the value and things like that. But it's, it's not often grounded in let's connect with all of the wonderful organizations that are, that are being built and that are lifting, uplifting the city. And these are the people who we're gonna back 
uh, financially. These are the people, the entrepreneurs that are the next generation. And I think when that disconnect happened, it actually leaves a lot of people, excuse me, it leaves a lot of people out of the community and out of the conversation. And Pledge LA is working really hard to change that. So, you know, that's, that's how I think about Pledge LA and sort of my involvement. I'm, I'm actually curious, you know, if you talk a little bit more about Cape War Center and, and, and the work that you're doing there, because you guys have a, a number of initiatives as well. Definitely. And I'm repping now the 510 out in Oakland. <laughs> I encourage you all to come and join. Uh, check out what we're doing in the East Bay. What we're really looking to do is building the home of Tegnan Bright, and it really starts with being in community. Uh, for us at the Caper Center, all of our focus is really increasing representation in tech and entrepreneurship. And the key sauce for all of this is that we want to empower the folks who have lived the journeys that have the problems. We want to make sure that as folks who have been in it, that's where the innovations will come in. And that requires really being foot and ground. Um, at the Caper Center, for the folks who may not be aware, uh, we are focused on looking at the entire pipeline from the talent development of doing three-year three-year programs in, in high school, all the way to help and spur a, the pipeline development, getting folks into their first tech job, helping them continue and eventually become founders. Uh, we also have the Caper Capital arm, which is a venture arm. The more folks are tend to be familiar, which I highly recommend you check out the Caper Capital Impact Report, because it will show you with data, with specific examples, the power of founders who have lived the journeys and their innovations that they can have, but also the VC top 25 percentile returns that it could have. So yes, you can make money and you can use tech to close gaps of access, and we're doing it, but it requires this whole really ecosystem lens and approach. And for me, it's really empowering, especially to be able to take my experience of being an engineer in itself, being a woman of color, being an immigrant, um, to really be able to share that journey and connect with the, the local community on the ground. And so we have programs that are helping specifically community college students get connected to, to job-based opportunities at different tech companies. We've been able to mobilize over 1,000 folks from an idea to a prototype to start their journey in tech entrepreneurship. And I'm super excited, and you'll be the first ones to know, exclusive, <laughs> come into West Oakland, because there'll be a little surprise there coming up on how we're looking to scale our ecosystem work there as well. So then that way we provide more clear path for our community to really be engaged. And it really, really re takes you being out there, zip code by zip code, because it doesn't come just by putting out a report, putting out a, a research, or putting out a call. You really have to be in there. And there's this one thing that I, that I think I've learned the most in this work, is that Oakland doesn't play. Trust takes time. And good intentions can only go so far. And so I think one of the parts that, especially the contrast of having tech, where you're, like, as you mentioned earlier, you got to run fast and cover a lot of break things. When you're doing that in community, you don't get a second chance to unbreak things. And so you have to be make sure, making sure that the right people are at the table, that is very inclusive of the, the folks who are there and that they don't feel pushed out. Right now, Oakland has a big um, gentrification. The homelessness has been increasing. You take a, 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 the current look, it's really at that, at that at time where it could go either way. And so my job, and I stay up at night thinking, how can we use the resources as a foundation to change that direction? Yeah, awesome. I mean, it, it's funny. Uh, so in, when Lily and I connected, when we found uh, out that we were going to do this together, both of us started trying to convince the other person to move to the other yeah. city. <laughs> Uh, and, 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 you know, in my view, I think L.A. is like, like has such a, a great position now with so many good organizations here. The fact that we have, like with Pledge L.A., so many uh, le leaders from the venture community and tech founders from the community that are, that are dedicated to doing these things. Allison mentioned a couple of the initiatives I, I kind of want to reiterate. We're placing un people from underrepresented backgrounds in, in top-tier venture capital firms across Los Angeles. What that means is these people are in a position, they've broken into an industry that is historically and notoriously extremely difficult to break into. And what that means is that their opinion matters in terms of what kinds of products and services get funded, get, get the opportunity to see the light of day, um, and, and their voices in that room. And, 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 and that makes such a huge impact in the grand scheme of things. Um, you know, one of the things we talked about was like, thinking about big picture, like five years out, if you could wave a magic wand, what would be the thing that you would change uh, that could have the biggest impact on the tech communities? Somebody who sits on the foundation, I really want to see us who have that privilege put it to use. There's a lot of money sitting in a lot of these endowments that just needs to get out. There's a take a chance, take a chance in investing in the folks who have lived the experience, 
who will show you and think out of the box. I think that's one of the parts that sometimes I, is, is a benefit that I'm totally not from the philanthropy sector. This is my first time ever being there. I don't know we're running out of time. Uh, but it gives me a fresh lens to be like, why? Why not? So I would actually start for the folks who are in the seats, ask why not? How can we do this differently? We're not in normal times. Our communities are being attacked from different lenses. And the fact that we are able to be in this room and this beautiful setting, it's a privilege that we all should recognize. And I really encourage you to do that. And to close it out, for you, Austin, especially as being an investor, being one of the very few men of color, what would you like to see be done differently? I, I think it's really uh, folks that, have, that are in a position that decide which investors to back, recognize that when you are backing, uh, different investors that have come from different perspectives recognize that that ultimately leads to a diverse product set being created, diverse services being enabled to be created. Um, and, and, and I think it makes a difference. Uh, so thank you and please uh, support Pledge LA where you can. We really appreciate the time and, and the opportunity to talk about this. Come visit Stay. Oakland. And, <laughs> Stay in LA. <laughs> <laughs> thank All you. Right. Thanks.